anyone wants to follow me, he has to deny himself, take up his cross and follow in my footsteps. Whoever wished to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospel, he will save. My dear people, I don't know about you, but those words are harsh. Those words are against any value of humanity. In order to understand those words, we have to go to the readings, and then we come to the message. In the first reading today, we hear the prophet Isaiah speaking about the servant of God. Although God was their master, their king, and all that goes with it, we know that Isaiah spoke about Jesus, that he was the servant of Yahweh, the servant of God. And we know that because the reading really specifies what kind of treatment the servant is going to have. They're going to pluck at my beard. They're going to do all kinds of things, and mockery, and uh, they're going to just very much insulting things. <coughs> That's why I am very in love with Holy Thursday night. Thank God for the night of Columbus that they really brought Jesus through the whole night. Because that is the night of betrayal. The night when we shall act death over life. When we deny our very leader, our very source of existence. When we kill God and did him as we say, not. In the Gospel today, we find Jesus taking his disciples to the area of Caesarea Philippi. And many of you say, why those words have been put in the Gospel? Because, remember that the Jewish people would never allow any pagan <coughs> to live in the holy city of Jerusalem. Jerusalem is the capital city, the city of God. And so they would not allow any Gentile to live there. So the Romans, is there, is because they are controlling Palestine, in order to really have a place, they was given a place and they named it after Philip the Caesar. And that was the seat of authority. Remember the Pontius Pilate, the middle of the cohort, every morning they have to travel to Jerusalem to sit on the bank where they have uh, their business to take place. And Jesus said to his disciples as they were there, who do people say I am? Because like the Baptist, you are not afraid of speaking the truth. They could believe that you're right, that Baptists raised from the dead, they, they believe. You are Elijah, because according to our um, uh, law, of the, of the, of the, of the Mosaic law, Mo, Elijah is about to come again. I don't know how many of you have said to the, to the Jewish people when they celebrate their Passover. They always prepare one, setting and the chair at the end of the table and nobody sits there. And they leave the door and they are jar because they believe that Elijah will come. Elijah will come and he will be with them again. And so the people believe that Jesus is alive. Also the people believe that he is one of the prophets. The one of the prophets who came from the past. And that is what they believe in. And we know that Jesus was very impressed with all that they said. But then finally he said, And you who have been with me over two years, whom do you say I am? And they say, Peter said, You are the Christ. You are the one that we know that you are the consecrated. Because the Christ comes from prison. It doesn't come from Christ, it comes to the anointed one. And Jesus said, Peter, it is not you who speak, but my Father is giving you this carriage, is giving you this inspiration, and I ask you, please, you and the others, to keep it secret. My hour is not here, because of the Jewish people begin to hear that he claimed himself as God, they will kill him. The only one is God. And then all of a sudden he begins to speak to them, we are going to Jerusalem, 
and there I'm going to be given in the hands of murderers. The chief priests are going to deny me. I am going to be put to mock mockery. I am going to be put to the cross. I am going to die. But after three days I will rise. And Peter said to himself, I just gave him the greatest title that he has got, and now he is going to let people kill him. What's going to happen to us? You see how, people, how the mind of Peter thinks. Well, I fit in the equation. And Jesus said to Peter, as he turned around and said, Peter, get behind me. Because your mind is very shallow. You are thinking like a human. You are not thinking like God. Get behind me, Satan. First he exalted him because he said the truth. Now he called him an associated with the devil, with, with, with Satan. Now let's face it. If you want to be successful, are you going to hang around with losers? And it happens we do in our lives. That's what we did. That's why we are in the trouble. And your mother tells you, do not hang around with this one. Don't do this. Why? Because losers bring losers. Why do we that is what Jesus. Jesus is a loser on the cross. Jesus is undefeated. Jesus is someone who lost the battle. And you are going to put your faith in him? And that's what Peter taught. But I want to put reality and I put myself in security. I will go with people who are powerful, who are strong, who push themselves on others and try the best they can to really accept. We have about 56 days before the election, and we are already seeing one and the others. Both of them are a bunch of liars. Tell us that they are going to give us so much money. Oh, he's not going to touch. You are medical. All you senior citizens, you are going to have it made under the sun. All you people are going to have a lot of jobs. All vote for us and I will tell you what I do. The stimulus that I gave and this is what I do. And poor people, poor us. So, oh, how wonderful. And then you go to the polls on the 6th of November and you vote for the candidate who lied to you. <coughs> and after four years you say, is a loser. But that is what we do in society, dear people. That's what we do in our society, in our world. We hang our heads with things that are shiny, with things that are powerful, with things that are something. The terminal and they are a transit. They are today and tomorrow they are not. And that's why Jesus said to Peter, get behind the saints. Because I come from the Father not to be the Superman and make miracles and feed the crowd and heal the people. I did not come from heaven to do so. I come from heaven to do one thing, to die on the cross, to redeem the world, that I will reconcile the world to the Father through me. I will die so that you will live. I will rise so that you have the hope of everlasting life. That was the purpose. God so loved the world, he gave us his only son. And whoever believes in him will come in the flesh, and he come in the flesh to die for us, and live by him by the message of the gospel, will be saved. If you look at that second reading today, that is the lesson for each one of us. St. James, as I told you last Sunday, was the first of the apostles to die martyr. He is the one who will become the first bishop of Jerusalem. And he is writing for his people, but also he is writing to the universal church. In fact, the church selects him today to be our thought and our message and our inspiration. And St. James says, 
We live by faith. And it's a continuation of last Sunday. But our faith has to be a loving faith. A faith that really is not coming because, but it's coming because of our commitment that we have in our heart with Jesus. Because if you don't have it, I'm seeing some new faces today. If you don't have commitment to Jesus, everything will stop, everything will fade. Everything will change and you will change too. The only thing that does not change is when there is a true relationship with the Lord Jesus. And St. James said to us, what good that you claim that you have faith if your faith is dead? If your faith is not alive? What's good it is that I see my brother who is hungry, who is asking me to reach out to him. And I say to him, have a nice evening, keep warm, God love you. He said, I will show you my faith from my words. And there are people that exactly what the Lord is asking us to do. We are called to be a family, a community. A community that has one heart and one mind. That's the idea we gather every Sunday to worship and thank God for all his blessing as we ask him for his protection. I wish I can talk to you about the Mass, but one day we'll have the occasion to talk. Because during the Mass there are people we are celebrating for feast. Palm Sunday, Holy Thursday, Good Friday, Holy Saturday. Four. A few moments from now you're going to say holy, holy, holy. Continue. Hosanna. What the word Hosanna come? From Jesus enter Jerusalem. A few moments from now you're going to hear me say, and at the end of the supper, here is the last supper, here is the, here is the last supper. Jesus not only took bread and wine, but he said this will be given. He anticipated Good Friday. And when the priest say, this is my body, this is my blood, at that very moment, the separation of the body and blood, at the very at the moment, we proclaim the death of the Lord, that is Calvary. And before we receive communion, the priest broke the host, take piece of the host, and put in the chalice, so that thou will receive the resurrected Christ, not, not a corpse, but the living Christ, the Christ who is alive, the Christ who will give life to us. And that's why St. James said, if you really believe that our faith is a faith of action, then we cannot satisfy that you go to church on Sunday. Because we go to church on Sunday because you need it. You are not going to increase God's glory or you are going to tell glory, I did you a favor. But the favor is yours, not his. God is God with me and without me. But when we come to him and we throw ourselves to him for worship, he said that he will bless us and he will give us peace that the world cannot give. How do I know that my faith is a living faith? A faith that really is fruitful. See how do you promote the gospel. <coughs> See how you live day in and day out the message of the gospel. See how many times you are crucified for the gospel message. So what do you mean, Father? See how many times when you talk to your neighbor, you talk to your friend, talk to your children, they reject you. They tell you that you are close-minded, I don't need to go to church, because the church is a bunch of this, the priests are a bunch of this, and some of them, some of those titles are true. But remember that why Jesus came from heaven, not to say the holy, but to say the sinners. And we are part of that church, that we claim that we are sinners when we say, and I have sinned through my own fault. That's why in the beginning of the Mass, 
the old confessor. They tell you that they don't want to believe to belong to a church who is regimental. Don't do this, don't do this, do this, do this. Each one of you go to work, no? Thank God. And many times you have meetings or you have, as we say, plan from your boss or who is your coordinator or supervisor. They want this, they want this, they want this, and they want this. Maybe the first time you say, my way is better than their way, and you do it your way. The second time they will warn you. I want you to do it this way, and you are going to come this time, and you are going to leave this time. And if you disobey him, subordination, give you the, split, the pink, the slip. The third or fourth time, you see the door. And unfortunately, he will tell you, don't let the sit. You know what? <laughs> My dear people, this is what our faith is all about. Our faith is not a loss, but it's one word. Love. If we love, we don't need nothing else. Because love does not make you go against your neighbor by robbing him, killing him, stealing him, or whatsoever. No! And that's what James is saying to us. That faith has to issue for the law. You come to church as the pumping station, I call it here, to be filled with gasoline, to be filled with, with gas. And then you are going to leave the church, not to forget what you celebrate, but to bring forth what the priest say, go now and forth. Go now bring the message to other people. Or some of you are afraid even to talk about, with, about Jesus with your, with your friends. Some of you are not going to tell your son the second time to go to church. Because after all, you know, they get so angry. <laughs> when Jesus said to them, I come from the Father to take you to heaven, they say, you are nuts. And you know what they did to him? I don't see no one in Burma or in Barrington or Magnolia hanging on crosses in the corner of the roads. He was rejected for the truth. And so you. Do you think they're going to cross you when you say something about Jesus? You're nuts. I don't want to go to church. I read the Bible. I, I pray alone. Jesus said, unless you eat of me and drink of me, you have no life to the word without Jesus is dead. The word with Jesus is life. Because everything was written there, was written about him. You can read the Bible 25 times a day if you want to, but you remain empty. Because it's not what you read, but how much that reading becomes part of you. And when it's some part of you, you are going to bring that message to the world. And this is the challenge I challenged you last week, which I don't see too many of you did the homework. Or do I see some of you did the homework? Bring somebody with you. You look around you, dear people. We have a lot of space and abuse. You know what that means? That means that tomorrow, your church of St. Rita will not be here. Another murder will take place. Many of you have children sleeping in bed still. Many of you have people of your own family who does not even bother to say God one day, one day, once a day or once a week. And what are we doing? And you tell me that we have zeal for Jesus. When you have zeal for Jesus, dear people, you become eccentric. That's the word. The word that I am mad for the Lord. I'm crazy for him. Because the more you love him, the more you want others to love him. Because we are called by virtue of baptism to be ambassadors for Christ. 
And the ambassador, as we say, this last few days, you see, our ambassador, of, of the American ambassador was killed in Libya. Of course, they are in danger of physical. But they go. And why they go there? To bring the message of Washington to that people. He'll be the light, he will be the, the channel by which America will bring her message, the message that our forefathers formed this country. The message of peace, the message of equality, the message that everyone was created equal by God. The message that we had all opportunity to become what we want to become. The message that we are not here to kill one another, but to help one another. And that ambassador, who is a part of the world which does not say, he goes. And so do we. We are sent in a world that is pagan. A world that denies. A word that points finger at us. A word that tells you go and see what your son is doing and your daughter living with somebody else before you come and talk to me. Of course they tell you that. A word that is not concerned about the message, but how can they destroy you? And Jesus made it clear. Today, Peter, you are young. And you put your clothes and put your sash around you and go wherever you want. But the day will come when they put your clothes on, put your your, your, your such around you, and take you places that you don't want to be. That to show them what kind of treatment and death he is going to have. And he said to us, if they are doing it to the green, because he was the green, he was the green wood, how much they will do it to the drum? Is the student greater than the teacher? Today the student, Peter, is telling the teacher what to do. And the teacher puts him in his place. Say, get the hand with him. My dear people, this is the message. That we have now to really understand that all of us are going to leave this church today with one thing in mind. That we deepen our relationship with the Lord Jesus, deepen it. Because there everything begins. And when that commitment with Jesus is very serious, then you are going to see the fruit that you are going to do. If you don't have a commitment with Jesus, really, really devoted to Him, and He can become beyond anything in this life, you are going to fail. You're going to start going to church, you're going to start to pray, and everything will fade away. Because you need to be committed to the Lord Jesus to do what you do. Do you think the apostles, after Pentecost, when they left that synagogue, they went to proclaim Jesus alive because it was a phantasma in their heads, or they believed that he is alive? when their life was a state. Do you think that the martyrs of the church, St. Lucy, St. Agnes, all these beautiful saints who died for the Lord, do you think they died because? They died because there was a fire within them that they cannot put out. I turn to you, Catechus, today, whom you have the torch of faith, that the church today is going to commission in your hands to take that torch and light it as you light the faith of those who encounter you. Especially the parents. I think we need to have a sensitivity for parents. Not for children. Parents have no faith today. There is no love for God in the family. They don't know what God is. They send them to our city, it's like we are the babysitter, the babysitter of the week. Or because they want to make a party when they receive first communion. Oh, Father, how long is it going to be first communion? Because I have the hall prepared. Go to the hall and be, you know. My 
and your people that has to be serious about tomorrow. Tomorrow somebody is going to leave our fruit. As I always say to you, if you want interest from the bank, you have to invest today to go next year to have interest. Otherwise they call 111 or the police on you. If the farmer wants to reap, he has to plow. And the gospel said that I mean the psalm said it. The farmer go with tears in his eyes as he saw. But how joyful he come home with the vanities of, of what he had harvested. Same thing with us. You are going to put the seed down. You are not guaranteed of the harvest. Somebody else will. But that's the church. We are building tomorrow. And tomorrow we want our generation to come to be enlightened by our faith, by the torch of light that we are, that we have received from Christ to the next generation. The Holy Father, in about two weeks, he is going to announce to us on the 11th of October, the year of faith, and it's going to be a challenge for each one of us. A challenge that our faith will be something that we are not going to take for granted, but something that we are going to work on. Talk to your people. Talk to those who are, as we say, a little bit lukewarm. Bring them to faith. So that tomorrow will be possible. And always keep your mind. At the end of the journey, all of us, including me, are going to answer to the fruit of the reality. I was hungry, I was thirsty, I was ill and in prison, I was homeless. What did you do to make me happy? If the answer is, Lord, I did my best to see you in those who come to me in their needs, and my heart really was overwhelmed with compassion for them, I will say to you and to me, let it on you. Because whoever, whatever you did to the least of my brothers and sisters, you have done it to me. This is the call of every Christian. That's why we are one family. That's why we are one, one church. That's why we receive one baptism. That's why we come around one altar. Because one is the Lord. One is the Lord that we share. What is the cup that we drink from? All of us are necessary to build the church of tomorrow. And so I challenge you. Make sure that in your mind, in your heart, you have a deep relationship with Jesus. And I assure you that no cross, no tragedy, and nothing in this life will separate you from the love of God. God bless you.